Okay, we're back. Hey, Brandon, everybody. I just had to restart my... Uh, we're back here live. This is Encounters, the spiritual UFO talk show. Welcome to the show. And I had a little bit of a thing with my camera. So hopefully now I'll be able not to go dark when I bring a guest on. Sometimes it doesn't go dark. Sometimes the camera does. It's one of those things that I've tried to figure out. Uh, now, see, I just made myself go dark. How come? How'd that happen? Oh, now I made myself go light again. Let's see here. I'm playing with my camera, folks. I'm trying to see why that's happening. Now I'm going light again. Okay. That's really weird. Uh, Breakfast Club Awaken. We're going to follow you too. I'm going to bring uh, the other person up here. We're going to hopefully that person will come back. I just restarted here. I'll just deal with my camera. I know I probably need a whole bunch of lights in here. Good to see everybody on. This is Encounters. If you're just joining us, this is the number one spiritual UFO uh, talk show here on social media. We're going to try to see who is here tonight. A lot of people are here. Oh, that's not good. By frequent nosebleeds, that's not a good thing. That's a negative VT encounter if you have nosebleeds. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Hey, Johnny. Everyone coming in here, welcome to the show. And we'll see if we get uh, that other person back on here with us. I have a feeling we have some great interviews tonight, as always. And the way I know that is just because that's the way it is. We always have good interviews with people here. It never ceases to amaze me. So if you're just new to the show, one of the things you'll see me do is drink apple cider. That's one of the things I do here. You know, some people drink coffee on talk shows. I drink apple cider. And, uh, yeah, definitely, Brandon does have, we're going to bring Brandon back, too. And I want to get this other person on that, um, I had to just uh, redo something technically here, but I think we're good now. Breakfast Club Awaken, uh, Breakfast Club Wake, Wakey, Wakey, we're going to bring you on, too, tonight. There's some very interesting things happening. Hey, friend, Maiden, good to see you, sister. Blessings to you. I'm just reading comments right now to see who I'm going to bring on to the show. If you have over 100 followers, you can be a guest on the show. Uh, if you have over 800, you can do audio and video. Beautiful thing is TikTok changed it again. So now you don't have to wait to 200 followers. You can be 100 followers. And as long as you're in the public setting, I can hear your story and so can everybody else. Now that's pretty good. Welcome, Robin, Lisa. Oh, good. Uh, let's, uh, I'm going to bring uh, Freeman on here. Let's see if I don't go blank. Let's see uh, if I don't go blank. Let's see if I don't go, I'm going to, do this right now, and I'm going to pray that my screen stays bright. Let the screen stay bright tonight. It's not so. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it, uh, technically speaking. Let me just switch my camera to a different area. I'll probably have to put another light in here, and okay. I will do that. Yeah, friend Freeman, how you doing? Hey, good evening. Yeah, so uh, they won't let you use my camera until I get a thousand people, but I can uh, be here in audio. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're here. 
So tell us when do your when tell us a little bit about where you are and when things started happening with these sightings. Okay, so um, when I was very little, uh, I didn't know what to call it back then, but I used to astral project out of my bedroom and fly all over Seattle. Used to be drawn hmm. to specific areas. Uh, this place called Carkeek Park that I used to go all the time. I like to play at with my friends, mm -hmm. and another place named Gasworks Park that overlooks uh, Lake there. Uh, and I and I uh, distinctly remember being able to fly around the house. I used to go to my sister's room. Uh, those experiences ended when I was about six or seven years old. Wow! And uh, then uh, I grew up, joined the Marine Corps, and uh, was uh, living in Phoenix, Arizona. I I joined in, in, in 1996 in the pool program, and for a year, I was a fitness nut and used to go climb Camelback Mountain all the time. Oh, wow. Uh, you, yeah, it was my tradition every night to go up there and do the hike. So uh, on Thursday, March 13th, uh, Ninety-seven. Uh, I was I was about three quarters of the way down from the hike. It was getting dark. It was well. By the time I got to the bottom, it was dark. And uh, off in the distance, down in Phoenix, uh, you know, I see these bright lights in the sky. Yeah. Uh, over by the base. So, mm -hmm. um, I got down, threw my uniform back on, and drove over there. But my first thought when I saw them was, oh, they must have built a new stadium or something. I'm going to go check out, you know, maybe there's a right. game I can take in. So <clears throat> anyway, I drove over there and, of course, I could see these lights in the sky. So I drove uh, on base there. Uh, they had the place cordoned off and shut down. You couldn't get on unless you had your card with you your, and, and you were in uniform. Um, I used right. to go to the flight line. Um, at, at Luke Air Force Base at least three times a week and just sit on the on the flight line while I was having lunch and watch the fighter jets take off and feel that rumble in the chest, man. I used to love doing that. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to all the, all the Air Force goons that were out there. So anyway, that, that night um, I, I drove back on the base uh, and uh, – one of the guys that was standing at the at the entrance to the base had never been there before. Uh, and I'm not saying I know who he was or what he was, but dude was dressed like a man right. in black. And right. uh, and I looked at him. I looked the other dude and just he lifted the gate. I drove past, went to the flight line. And uh, as I mm -hmm. got there, I noticed, of course, the sky is completely blacked out under these lights. Really? And, uh, so anyway, I got down there. Uh, to where I used to sit, and I look up, and uh, there's this gigantic triangle that's come out of the uh, out of the mountainside, uh, just across from the fourth runway, about a quarter mile up the hill. It there, the the side of the mountain was open, like it had a a cave I'd never seen before, a hole or opening in it. Wow! And uh, this thing had come out of there, and they had jets scrambling. Uh, initially I thought, well, I've learned since what it was, uh, yeah. but at the time I thought, what in the world is this thing? It's completely quiet. Didn't make any right. noise. It's jet black, yeah. uh, and had, a, a, a kind of, a, I don't know what you'd call it. A major body tingle when you're huh. close enough to it. I was probably within 150 yards of it. Wow. And, uh, and it just made my whole body i can feel in every cell of my body some kind of weird vibration so mm -hmm. initially i was a little bit nervous about it yeah, I would, uh, yeah perfect per perfect triangle shape uh no not stealth bomber I, those those things not even close so um anyway um uh, uh i ran into an adjacent building where i used to hang out with these guys and uh, mm -hmm. there's an officer there i'm not going to name him uh and i said what the heck's going on? And he said, that's classified. I can't tell you. Wow. I said, I said come on. Now, you're also, just to let people know, you're formally from, uh, you, you're formally in the military. My dad was in the Air Force in World War II. You're formally military too. So you, your eyes are pretty good about what you're experiencing. 
Yeah, and I, I like I said, I for for three years I sat on the flight line. I knew every every craft right. that, that that dropped dropped in or left that place. I mean, that's that, that was my hobby for a while. Yeah, uh, I um, during during my tenure as as a marine, I was brought in for a bunch of tests because um, I score really high at a bunch of things, uh, and uh, I was one of the people that was responsible for testing a new technology called night vision uh, back in the day. Uh, oh, yeah. The helmets, the helmets uh, that were being developed for, for pilots, um, I was one of the test subjects. Really? Uh, Interesting. And uh, they used to put these <laughs> the first time. Now, I won't get too off tangent here, but the, the, the first time I put one of those helmets on, the guy handed it to me, and he, he kind of smiled. And he said, don't drop it. That's $8 million. Ten million dollars. <laughs> I think you better put that on me. Anyway, uh, yeah. they uh, used uh, these moving, um, I guess, highly detailed model boards. Yeah. And my job was to be able to pick out and see things in total darkness and identify objects for them. And they used that test data across a bunch of uh, different testees to, you know, draw conclusions for whatever they were trying to test. Right. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm very detail oriented. I know what I was looking at. Uh, this thing's a triangle. Uh, I want to say easily a quarter mile. Uh, point wow! Point. It was huge. Uh, and black- what were, you, were, you, were you feeling anything like? I always find this interesting when people. Uh, I mean, you were right there. The thing was right there, right coming there. out of the mountains. Um, were you getting the feeling? Now they were scrambling fighter jets. You mentioned just before. Were they uh, scrambling these jets? It, uh, when you were looking at this object, I get the feeling it wasn't anything that was ours, correct? Um, that's what I thought initially. I've since been proven initially, wrong. Okay, okay so um, I, I can tell you emphatically what that object was, the program it was involved with, and its name. And I can also tell you that it was AI controlled in AI 1997. Controlled. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Um, the object's name is Cassiopeia. It's a classified AI driven, uh, it much like the person in your chat said earlier, like a stealth bomber. It's, 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 I I don't know of any way weapons capability or the platform specific at all. Yeah. Any of that about it. What I did know though, uh, later, well, I found out later, um, through a friend who worked at the skunk works and told me that (laughs) he'd been punching rivets for five years into a panel that was part of it. Really? So, yeah, uh, in, in, a, in the black box. So he didn't mm-hmm. know what he was doing until later, and he saw the object, and he saw he, he put two and two together. Hey, that's that's my work. Uh, so we put put two and two together anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the thing came out of the mountainside. It hovered over the over the like the south end of of, of the runways for a, for about ten minutes. Then I it, it it slowly moved over a bunch of little na- a bunch of the neighborhoods in the area, and then it moved faster than is humanly possible right. from uh, the point that it was at down headed towards Tucson, and those wow. jets, uh, two F 16s four F eighteens, and 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 two chase planes were in the air following it. So now were they following it because they were did they escorting it? No, escorting. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Uh, initially, I, I thought story. they were chasing it. You know, when I was there yeah. live, I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to get that thing. I was waiting for fireworks in the sky right. or some kind of, you know, hushed out event. But it turns out, um, you know, they were all in the know. They were escorting yeah. it. And uh, I don't know whatever became Cassiopeia or what that project's gone on to do. Okay, so that's just, that was in, in, interface one with – with tech that I am now convinced is reverse engineered from ETs. Yeah, I was going to say it was reverse engineered technology. I'm convinced because you have yeah. to remember that that in 1997, right now you hear public facing, you hear you know Elon Musk and and uh, Google Mind Project and Ray Kurzweil talking about AI, the development, how advanced it is. Um, yeah, guys, it's it's 50 years ahead of what you think it is. Yeah, and no, because that, that thing was true. piloting self intelligent by itself. It was There's not piloting there was no, by itself. AI there was no pilots on board. No, no pilots. pilots were on Cassiopeia. None. That's amazing. So, um, yeah. So what I know 
uh, is what I've told you. That's it. I don't have any yeah. in, other additional information about Cassiopeia other than it's still a black project. It's still top yeah. se- beyond above top secret. Yeah, Scott. Yeah. That was, that was I was on base. Something that, you just revealed something that this is what the show's about. Uh, I've always been a believer in disclosure. We have somebody uh, in the Defense Department who's a uh, person that's been on my show. She comes in, watches once in a while, and she's got a, a the top secret clearance. And she also brings information on our show once in a while too. So what you're giving us, I think, is really important. Yeah, just eyewitness. I didn't have any special clearances. I mean, I had a secret clearance for my job, but that one didn't wasn't related to to this mm-hmm. at all. And yeah. so anyway, uh, yeah, I, st- I stuck around till about eleven o'clock. Uh, trying to talk to guys on the flight line, but nobody would say anything about it. Like everybody was mm-hmm. just so oh, hush, hush. Anyway, I got bored. I went home. I was like, "Wow, what in the heck did I just see?" Okay, right. so um, <laughs> it wasn't. But about eight months later, I was in Sedona in a hotel, and there's a balcony um, off the off the hotel room I'm staying at mm-hmm. um, to my right is uh i'm on a hillside there's there's trees and the shrubbery and i'm overlooking um the the lights downtown and uh three orbs i don't know they were kind of orangish glowy color Mm -hmm. just came right up in front of me circled in front of me for about 10 minutes and then darted off again to the left they were only there for like not even quick enough for me to go grab a camera i was absolutely stunned so Okay, now fast forward to last year. Me last and my year, son, okay. I'm in Alabama now. I'm in Alabama mm-hmm. now. And I, I was driving my son to school. It's the crack of dawn. And we're mm-hmm. driving by a cow pasture. Uh, we pass a stand of trees that we go by every day. I happen to look left and sitting there, big as you please, is a saucer not too different exactly from what you have in your picture here on right. your screen. Yeah, and it was hovering. Yeah, the yes. yeah, it was hovering over a, a big, a big herd of cows. And wow, um, I was going kind of fast when I saw it. It was just a quick blink, and I was like, "Holy cow!" So I stopped, uh, backed up, and my son was sitting in the car, and he saw it too. I said, "Look at that!" and it just disappeared, like vanished in front of my eyes. And what color was that? That uh, it was gray, but mm-hmm. it was so bright. The reason I noticed it was it was it was emitting a, an absolutely brilliant light. Mm-hmm. That's what caught my attention when I went by. Yeah. And so, uh, I'm I'm the the one that was over the cows. I think it was there collecting a cow. I do. Do you think it? Do you think it already had done that? And it was. I, I don't know, room. man. I, I have no idea. I was driving. I look, so this bright light. Look left, boom. I look yeah. and I see the saucer shape behind the bright, bright light. I stopped, backed up about thirty yards to get yeah. to get it back in view because I drove into a stand of trees on the left that was blocking my yeah. view. I backed up and said, "Jonathan, look at that." I was telling my son, you know, check it out. We were all freaking out. I said, "Oh my yeah. gosh, it's the third time I've seen something like this. What in the world?" What's going on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot I've had a fourth encounter. Okay, this one's really, really, really interesting. In the same yeah, town in, in Alabama, mm-hmm. I was just on my porch. I had a popped, uh, um, I had a, uh, a pipeline that broke outside front of my yard, and I was okay. all these guys to come fix it. It was a very sunny day in the middle of the summer. Um, that would have been t- uh, 2017. And I walked outside. I walked outside with my UV blocker sunglasses on, and I looked up in front of me. Just looked up because I'm always looking up. Yeah. And uh, above me, I have no. I can't. Couldn't judge the distance or the size of it. But there was an object floating, like looked like a can with a bunch mm-hmm. of communication devices on the bottom of it. And wow. Um, and um, what looked like discs and and antennas all coming yeah. off the bottom of it. Um, it wasn't a shape that should be able to fly. Right. Uh, um, I could still draw it. I did. I came home. I went inside and, and drew it immediately. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm an artist. So anyway, um, I went back out and I had taken my sunglasses off and I walked back out and looked up and it wasn't there. I'm like, what? It was completely gone. No, yeah. no, no. Okay. And I put my sunglasses back on and there it was. Oh, was there? When you... So when you didn't have the sunglasses on, 
could Just not let see our audience it. know. It was totally it, cloaked. It, you didn't see it. It was cloaked. totally cloaked. I ran ah, down to the guy gotcha. just to make sure I wasn't seeing things. I ran down to the guy on the on the side of the road that was uh, fixing my pipe. He was there at the at the utility point, and I said, "Look yeah. at that. Do you see that?" Because he, he had sunglasses on too, and he goes, "Yeah. What do you think it is?" I said, "Dude, that's a UFO," and he just laughed and turned around and kept working like he was not interested. But I, I, yeah. I, I went, I went, then I went inside and got my son. I said, hey, "Come here, look at this. Put your glasses on," and he could see it, and then he couldn't. We, you know, we did the on-off thing, and uh, yeah. so that, yeah, that was really interesting because I'm pretty sure that was ours. I, I, I think it was ours. You think uh, it was ours? Um, yeah, it was close enough for me to. I uh, run in and try to get a camera, my, my my cell phone to try and take a picture of it, but my cell phone couldn't see it. I tried to put my UV glasses in front of the camera to get a mm -hmm. picture to see if if, it, if the phone cam could pick it up, but it, it couldn't. So uh, wow. uh, then I watched it go straight up into the into the heavens, up and up toward the sky, um, uh, until it was no longer visible through my glasses. And I, that, that those wow. are all the experiences I personally had around. Uh, and yeah, all, and unidentified objects and, and one, one, yeah. one identified object that I didn't know what it was initially. But they're all very interesting, Freeman, because um, the one in Sedona, the three objects that in a nanosecond disappeared, that one I definitely believe was uh, extraterrestrial. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've listened to Stephen Greer since then, and, and he's explained what those orbs are and where they come from and how they, you know, he's able to, I guess summon them with groups of people yeah. that are vibrating in the right way and all this interesting stuff. Well, yeah, the C5 app is what we have a C5 group. Um, a lot about me is uh, I came out of the closet many years ago when I was a kid. I had uh, one upstairs. I lived in uh, cold. I lived in Long Island as a kid, but most half of my life I've lived up here in New England. And when I was a kid, I've told this story before, a true story, that I went upstairs after dinner. And I didn't know why I just had this urge. I had to go upstairs and I had a small room. My brother had a big, the bigger room, my older brother. He was downstairs and I felt like I had to go upstairs. So I went to the second floor of the house to my brother's room, opened up the wood blinds. There's a flying saucer hovering with a glowing white uh, radiant uh, glow, transparent glow around it. And I see men and women and even younger, like children, in light blue space outfits, and they were telepathically wow. communicating with me, and they said I wasn't from here. Now, then when I had that sighting, I had many sightings growing up in the 60s. All of them were non-terrestrial. Nothing was terrestrial. And I've seen one big ship um, that was known in the New England, New York State area for a time in the 80s called the Hudson Valley UFO Sightings. And okay. there's some, there were two books written about it. And um, I was walking out of a club, uh, I had been a DJ on a radio station doing reggae music back in the 80s and on a radio station in New Haven, Connecticut. And But I was at this club in the Nogatut River Valley here on the East Coast, which is a valley surrounded by high hills and so forth. And uh, I was in this desolate parking lot of this shopping plaza. And beyond the plaza was all woods and pretty much there was a condo uh, on a hill across the street from the thing in one supermarket chain supermarket time in the plaza and as i was getting ready to leave the club on it was like the middle of the night or something middle of a wednesday i hear a voice telling me to look up in really clear concise english look up as i'm walking out i look up and i see a spaceship about two football fields in length above yeah. the condo complex on a hill <laughs> and i'm watching it for 35 minutes shoot out eventually it shoots out two lights creating geometry above me right in the skylight. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just sat there watching it for 35 yeah. minutes straight out. 35 minutes. Yeah, man. That's, that's. I mean, I was on base for 30 minutes, about a half hour, uh, underneath yeah. that thing for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I, I, I couldn't speak, man. I was like, what in the world? Anyway, yeah. it's, uh, it's fascinating to talk to you, man. I, I have never uh, felt safe to talk about these things because Black Projects, and and in my specific history, I'm certainly on some yeah. list. There's no doubt I'm on a list somewhere. Yeah, I'm an oh, Operation yeah. Iraqi Freedom veteran, and you know I've seen some some things. Uh, there's another thing I've I've witnessed. I can't. I literally cannot talk about. Uh, but it has to do <laughs> with <laughs> is it UFO to, related. I mean, I'm in terms of. I mean, I, yes and no. Uh, I think that it's what I'm going to say is I'll keep it vague as I can. 
uh, is is that we are in 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 control of, of reverse engineered technology that oh, yeah. allows 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 uh, uh, the listening uh, of of all communication on Earth without mm -hmm. devices without a device right. in your hand. Yeah. And um, I I uh, accidentally uh, during a training exercise came across one of those one of those places. I can't even tell you where I was or what it was. That's not okay. Safe but but to tell you this that it is the weirdest looking thing you've ever seen it's uh, like um living animated mother of pearl colors floating all over mm -hmm. it. It, was the, it was the strangest thing and uh the the mass sergeant that i was with told me he was yelling at me don't look don't look shut up don't look he was screaming at me don't look <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me not to don't look. say a word don't, don't tell anybody because <laughs> i started it I started to ask him and he, he yeah. literally put his hand over on my mouth, like shut yeah, up, yeah. Don't, don't speak. <laughs> oh, and uh, that, that old master sergeant, he'd been on that, on that particular place where we were uh, yeah. you know, some 30 years. So he knew exactly yeah, wow. what it was. I found yeah. out later uh, we had a, 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 <laughs> this is a little bit of a funny story. Um, we had a, we had a butter bar uh, in our, in our unit who just fresh crisp out of college. Right. And he, Boy, did he have an attitude? Nobody liked him. Yeah. And uh, when we were um, doing exercises, <laughs> um, I was um, assigned to the Mark, which is a medical vehicle that supports tanks during uh, during the exercises that we were doing. I, I, can, I can tell you that I was part of Fort Fort Tank Battalion. Okay. Okay. So um, I, <laughs> I got reassigned from Charlie Company. A bulk fuel unit down in, in Arizona when when I was told you about that other story right, to, uh, right. four, four, to four tanks during Operation Iraqi Freedom. So anyway, uh, during some training exercises, we came across this thing. Uh, and uh, uh, this guy uh, that none of us liked uh, got into an incident with my particular platoon commander uh, and uh, when we were going over there, what happened was he was supposed to go out. That butter bar was supposed to go with the main force on the exercise, but he wound yeah. up being left behind. So hmm. he had to he had to um, use land nav to get to where we were going to the waypoints that we were going to. Um, as a result, um, he wound up also coming across that same location, wow. and instead of avoiding it. He went into it, like he went up to it. Dude was gone for three days. He vanished. So he was, he actually was he missing. The place. He, he, he approached went instant, it. He broached it. <laughs> and, so, and we were all laughing went, because it, we found out later, dude had been strip searched, taken down into a bunker, <laughs> and they messed with him. So um, because <laughs> you don't, you, boy, you, just, you don't come near those places, man. We were yeah. already, we were already, um, again, this is all stateside, okay, to the guy saying Iraq. No, this is all stateside. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, it, it was just kind of a funny story. He, we, we were all laughing in our tents that night uh, at his yeah. fate. But, um, yeah, no, uh, he, the guy got pulled in by um, dudes with uh, in full kit with no markings, jet black uniforms. Wow, uh, it was kind of crazy. Um, that the tech, I've still I've never seen anything like it since or or or, or before. Uh, yeah. it was it, it looked alive. It looked living. It creeped me out. Gave me a really e eerie feeling in, in my in my in my soul, man. I, I, there I, are I, things, and there are things, Freeman, that we the public really doesn't know about that you witnessed, uh, and only if they knew some of the things that have been hidden from the public. We have been so much lied to. Uh, for over 70 years, yeah. uh, you know, by all governments, not just our own Pentagon, all over the world, by the agencies within those agencies that are top secret in terms of cosmic top secret. Um, yeah. And, now, uh, now, in hindsight, yeah. I look back, I think maybe that was, you know, I don't know, maybe it was Arcturian or maybe it was Palladian or some advanced. Oh, you, mean the, you mean the last one that was actually with that, that, living, that living thing, that thing I came across that freaked mm -hmm. me out. Yeah, uh, that I was told to shut up and don't talk and 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 uh, and never never talk about it. I was I was hmm. warned thoroughly, but again, that was thirty years ago, so I'm not nervous about yeah. it now. 
Oh yeah, I think uh, we've said it on here. Um, there's a there's a group of five of us, and I'm glad you found our show. You're going to be addicted to this show, like most people. Um, <laughs> That's interesting, you will. man. I, I've uh, always uh, wondered if you know if I'm if, if my experiences have been unique or why in the world I keep seeing stuff like this, and mm -hmm. uh, or why I come across it now. I've, I've been in uh, Alabama now for ten years, and that one last year okay. that I saw over the over the field was the last incidents I've had, and but well, um but it's so well, weird man i'm like why, yeah, no, it's why been, me? you hear about most, people talking about this stuff and i think now nah, whatever la 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 but then when it happens to you you're like oh it, it changes hey. and you it know reality change. check you, you am know. i manifesting something what's, what's no you're fine here? you're absolutely fine oh 30 years later the majority of the planet population understands that we are not alone in the universe yeah bro the, we're the not no way people weren't sure what to believe but the reason why there's a show like this i've been on radio for 21 years on npr radio here in the united states uh, and i do a show called the cosmic eye on sunday mornings okay. i was pushed to go on here on tiktok before 2023 and i never thought about it for a second about coming on here and doing a show but i've been on here and it's the best thing i ever did was create an actual talk show on here that's not you know a lot of stuff on tiktok people argue and yell at each other i'm saying oh really that's yeah, what those that's people do but i do a talk show i'm a professional at what i do my background is in media i've been on t i've done tv shows called the intergalactic tv network for about a year or two back yeah. in the 80s but uh, my main thing is i love doing what i'm doing here I'm, i've interviewed so many people with different stories and yours is just another great story um uh, yes i am glad that you found the show i hope you'll follow yeah, me too follow dude you. um that's yeah. i mean it's pretty cool i'm i'm i i don't know i only know you know the guys in my unit that were also witness to those things i don't know yeah. anybody any civilians that 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 like you that have that i've talked to you that that know this stuff and i've watched a ton of stuff on youtube of course but Probably. um just researching myself and 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 i have like i said i have a close friend that worked at this conk works black project yeah. um uh he left there and became a state patrol in washington state but yeah. um so i have some inside knowledge about some of this stuff that it, where the reverse engineering stuff a lot of it is our tech a lot of it is yeah the reverse engineering yeah we have a, a lot that's of it. Where, Way that's more than we have to teach think. people the difference yeah. between reverse engineer technology usually if it's not ours you'll have a feeling of energy coming from it that's way different. If it's ours, you'll feel absolutely nothing. Yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. not ours, you'll feel something. Like you'll either feel po very positive love coming from the ship yeah. or you'll feel the complete opposite or you'll feel nothing. There's only three things out there from my experience, and it's always yeah. been positive. Mine's always been non-terrestrial spaceships. But for those who wow. do, uh, I've had people in here who have seen the reverse engineered craft and have seen them. But I've also had the people that see the non-reverse engineered stuff, which is actually coming from, it could be the Palladians or other space people. Yeah, yeah. Those, those three balls that came up on me on the balcony, the, the, no way those are human. There's no way in the world. Yeah, see? There's no way. They, they were, they okay, were not. No, I mean, like, yeah. like um, it, 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 for a minute, like, I felt days sort of like in a sort of a dream state when they came up. I watched them come across the, the valley, and I was like, oh, cool. And then, boom, they're suddenly up at my balcony. And yeah, and I just I was in this I don't know I wasn't frozen I wasn't like locked or anything but I, I could uh, it was just some kind of feeling that was coming off those things man yeah Powerful. no I uh, I'm so, I'm happy you I just want to say for people uh, Freeman's our guest he's former military and also want to say that we're at four thousand three hundred likes I want everyone to tap if you don't know how to do this tap on my screen. I want to get to 100,000 likes tonight, as we normally do. But that means just if you Dang. see the people with the hearts there, you tap on my screen, on my screen, on my profile screen, that will start bringing up the likes over 5,000. So we want to get up to 100,000. That means oh. all 205 people out there, everyone start getting. I always like to get people involved in the show. Even if they're not guests on the show, they don't want to come on. Tap, that's your way of contributing. Uh, just uh, tap there and uh, be a contributor that way. So uh, uh, one, last hey, thing, one last thing before I step down, bro. Yeah. Uh, um, I had a, a TikTok account on here with with my uh, with my you know first initial last name and, and rank. Uh, yeah. That had seventeen thousand followers on it, and I was um, sharing a lot of this information. Uh, but um, I went a little bit deeper, and I guess it touched something that that's a taboo. Um, so. Um, I started 
naming a couple names that really that are related to uh, dumbs, uh, deep underground military bases where some of these uh, craft are stored. And yes. uh, and I, I named a couple people because I know them. And um, I know specifically one guy who um, I don't care if you believe me or not. I don't care if you roll your eyes. My yes. homeboy guards a fallen angel. It's what his job is. Mm -hmm. And um, he he guards a, a fallen angel. He said the chains that are on this thing are the size of buses. Each mm -hmm. length is about the size of a bus. And I started telling people uh, on a live one day on my account, and, a, and my account mm -hmm. got got absolutely blown up, gone, vanished. Wow. So I'm back, but I've only got like 300 people <laughs> following me. You know, what? Like, you know what? It's the fact that you're able to speak on my show. Uh, and tell the truth of what your experience is. For me, that's the most important thing uh, that we bust. Through. I always say I'm here to bust the matrix, and that's what I'm here to do. And when I hear stories like yours, uh, the things you talked about, about the big triangle craft that came out of the mountains and that they're being escorted by military jets, fighter jets, yeah, these Captain are Pierre, things. This, this is disclosure. This is what, you know, this is what my show is about. And I, I really appreciate you coming forward with all the information you were sharing. I really do. Yeah, well, I, I feel safe to do it now. I'm part of a team of operators here in Alabama. We're part mm -hmm. of a local militia. And, and uh, it, it would be an idiot that tried to come after us. You know, it would be a party yeah. they wouldn't want. So yeah. uh, I, I feel like uh, it's time. You know, I see Greer out blabbing his mouth about everything now. There's, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, there's people telling the truth. I'm like, okay, you know what? Heck with it. I'm just going to go ahead and tell everybody what's happened, uh, what I've experienced. Yeah, and one thing, and... can you mention about a little bit more about this angel before you go? I got yeah, a request for you. To... He, like, he, he can't tell me anything other than he stands outside and it makes awful noises, like groans. Really? And groans and it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's in a dumb. I can't even tell you where. Yeah, so, that's really uh, why. I've never heard a story like that before. Yeah, bro. That's um, amazing. Uh, look, uh, look on TikTok here because it's the only place I think it's allowed where uh, uh, sounds coming from underneath the Euphrates and Tigris rivers that have dried up. Okay. Look, wow. Interesting. Up, Interesting. Yeah. So, Interesting. Um, uh, that, that's like the sound that this thing's making. Now, the one that he's guarding is inside the United States. I can't tell you wow. where. Wow. It's classified, and I won't tell you where. But no, I don't want. To, I don't want to end up having problems here either. So, yeah, I appreciate that. I, you know, whatever you tell me that you can find the other stuff that's going to get anyone in trouble, I don't want to do that, you know? Yeah, anyway. So that's just my, that's my situation. Um, thank you for having me up. Appreciate it, bro. It's so nice to hey. meet you. Definitely will follow hey. you. Stay in touch. Yeah, we're friends now. So, yeah, you're a friend of the show. I'm friends with you. I'm glad to meet you, and I'm glad yeah. you're here. We're about the same age, too, dog. So God bless you. <laughs> we, we, we probably have a lot of same worldviews and everything. That's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll let you know when right, I get enough followers to be able to show my face, man. Well, you'll get there because TikTok has changed that. I think it's now 800 for uh, video. It used to be 1,000. So yeah, that photo, I'm using is, that photo I'm using is from 97 from that year. 97? Oh, you yeah, that's a long time ago, dog. You <laughs> yeah, that's, look the that's, same. <laughs> that's, that's me as, as a hard-charging uh, devil dog back then. So. I got you. I got you, man. Hey, everyone. Thank yeah. Freedom uh, Actual for being here. And what's your hey, first God name? God bless y'all. Thank you. What's your first name out that way? Yeah, I'm not going to give you that, dude. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, just, just, uh, that's, that's up to you. Yep. Sorry, right. brother. Fair enough. Yeah, you just Sorry. call me Freeman. Everybody else does. All my buddies still call me Freeman by my tag. Freeman? Okay, Freeman. Yeah. Well, you take care. Thank you for yep. being here. Thank you for your service. Hey, and you have a beautiful night. You too, brother. All I'm right. Gonna, take I'm care. Gonna, I'm going to stick around and watch, man. And tap. There you go. We <laughs> want you to do that for sure. Hey, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let you down the in the audience there. Uh, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna have the freedom of choice. I have three different requests here, and I'm gonna take a look at what we got going here. I'm gonna bring Brandon up. Brandon's coming up next. I'll go in that order. And uh, Brandon's our next. Hey, Brandon, how you doing, brother? Oh, dude, I'm doing fabulous, man. My, you back. Yeah, uh, my family, my star family has totally just enlightened me. They've shown me that they're here and that they're around me. Like, I feel their presence all the time. Like, 
I, I could, it's like I, I got them to shake their hand. Like that's how like whenever I'm getting like that spiritual realm of meditation, they're yeah. like there, you know. And yeah. you can even ask uh, half pint and stuff. I've sent them uh, angels of light, you know, and they said that yeah. they felt them as well. And wow. uh, it's been just a really great ex- week for me, you know. Friday, I was like totally on a different spiritual journey or I would have joined like you know what I mean and then all of a sudden yeah. all of a sudden it's Tuesday and I'm like wow you know that stuff really really uh works yeah. <laughs> it's been amazing yeah, been, the last time we had you on you, you were amazing and I know things have really started happening since you've been on the show the last time not that long ago either right, 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 right. no I think it was Wednesday I was on last Wednesday yeah yeah and I can't believe it's already what Tuesday yeah i mean yeah. it's been a great week my star family is definitely letting me know that they're there and they're protecting me and i could go outside and i swear it's like if you meditate outside i swear uh whenever i open my it's like a spiritual eye mm-hmm. opening thing i can yeah. see them and they're just they're all telling me that they're with me and they want to shine light on me and they want to just be here for me to enlighten me yeah. And you, are you starting to get telepathic? I got the feeling they're trying to communicate with you verbally too through yeah. consciousness. Am I correct? Yes, totally. Yeah. Feel it on the inside, like you know what I mean. Like they're talking to my soul. Mhm. Mhm. You know. And uh, do you think? And I know I don't even have to say this. I'm pretty sure at this point, since last Wednesday. You know, uh, they phones ringing. And I was gonna I'll say ET call home or something. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's the perfect thing with a ring phone. But uh, it's, crazy. it's crazy. It's crazy how crazy. fast that once I was open to it, how fast they were like, "Hey, we're here. We've always been yeah. here. We yeah. wanted you to know that we're here." And it's just, I can't even explain you, the divine feel, feeling. Brandon, you feel, and I feel this to be true, as I'm told, I've talked to you and got to know you. Do you feel that you're going to be like they're going to physically come in? To your home or something and manifest and say, how would you like to join us and go on the ship and, and, and see a few things? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's uh, mm-hmm. my next step. They've actually talked to me about it, and that's the next step that I'm going to be joining them on a ship. Now, when they talked to you, when did they talk to you about going on the ship? Can you tell our audience when um, that happened? Uh, Sunday night. It was Sunday night. Um, they... Like I was meditating and stuff, and they told me that they're going to come show me, and they're going to bring me up, and they're going to show me how divine and loving they truly, really are. They wow. want – yeah, like they are amazing, amazing beings, the Anunnaki. Like it gives me cold chills talking about them right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, and you're having a real experience. So is Mary and uh, you know Ray up in uh, the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah. Can you give people a sense of – there's a lot of garbage out there portrayed on AI internet related websites of what the, uh, the Anunnaki are like, and they're nothing like what people are trying to you know, push um, them as. The Anunnaki. What, what, what can you tell us about them? The Anunnaki are the most loving creatures I've ever felt in my life. And mm-hmm. whenever you feel them, no negativity is around. Like, you will feel full love. The Anunnaki is just a loving spiritual guide for us. They are nothing negative. If you feel negative, it is not them. And they said there's a lot of negative in this world. But once you get them to protect you, they can't come around. It's like they're camped around you. And, like, the negativity is gone. And even uh, Half Pint and them, I said, you know, I sent them guardian angels you know, through them telepathically. And they said that they felt them touch their back and they said that they're there. And I said, you know, the negativity can't come around you no more. And that's the, like, I'm telling full honest truth. Like it is amazing. The Anunnaki are bright, super divine beings and they don't let negativity bother those who they love and let them know that they love them. That's and what you're they, talking as a, for people in my audience. He's talking from pure experience, whereas uh, over the years on the internet, I've seen so much garbage 
about yeah. the, uh, the Anunnaki. That's not true. And people sensationalizing them as being these gods that took over this and took over that. That is not the way the Anunnaki are. The Anunnaki no. are also part of the Ashtar Command. They're mm -hmm. part of a grouping of many beautiful beings of light. Yes. But they are not controlling the whole universe. That's just not true. No, they do not control the whole universe. They want them, they want you to be open to them, but if you don't want to be open to them, they're not going to show you, you know. Right. They are the ones who want to follow, they'll show, but the ones who not, they're not going to just present themselves to you. They, you know, we have our we have a choice to do good or to do bad, you know, in our life each and every day. But they definitely so. encourage you to do better. And to mm -hmm. do, like, I swear, it's like, I've been making better choices. I've been doing better things. And, like, I just feel their high power of divine light that they're yeah. they're giving me. And it is, I love it. And I hope yeah. everybody on this planet can just experience that, you know, because yeah. they're my yeah. star family. Yep. See, and that's the beautiful thing. What I love about hearing these stories as we became friends since I met you that you know you have understanding of who your star family is because you and they are visually meeting this you're seeing their spaceships they are planning to take you on a spaceship yeah on their ship. So yes this is what some people say why haven't i seen anything i haven't met my star family you can't rush it you know if you haven't seen your star family yet or you're trying to see your star family don't try so hard to see your star family yeah they tell me to be patient they tell yeah. me to be patient yeah. You know, they say they present themselves to you whenever they know they should present this. They know exactly right. when they don't rush it. Be patient. And then it all comes to you. Yeah. You see, patience is the thing. And you were patient. You were like, you know, trying so hard. Like, I've got to see them. Come on now. Until I can't see you. That's not the way it works. No. You, everyone has star family out there. Everyone watching this show, you have star family. Even if you don't know who they are. You're trying so hard to get to them. Relax a little bit. Meditate a little bit. You know. Um, yeah. Relax, relax and meditate. Consciousness. It'll happen. It's not. You know. If it, it's not simultaneously happening for billions of people at once, it's not the way it works. It's like a wave of awakening, right? Yes. There you go, it's in a wave. Yeah. It's a wave of awakening, as Brandon knows, and that's why it happens the way it is. You know, his experiences. Ray and, um, you know, uh, Ray and Mary's experiences up in the Appalachian Mountains of Pennsylvania, they have physically, they've been, they've been taping and they've been taking pictures of the Anunnaki ships. They're yeah. documenting every single, every single thing that's happening. And I know you will too, as it gets more physical, you'll be yeah. able to, you know, take pictures and so forth, you know? Yeah, I definitely will. Cause, uh, I, I've never felt this love before. Yeah. No, I, uh, I believe it. I think we have uh, Abdul Aziz has something. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what Abdul Aziz wants to join about, but, uh, you know, so just let people do one on one interviews because I find it more interesting to do one on one. Sometimes I bring on two people, but I want people to get the full story of one person and then we can really hear the stories clearly. And you can see that you are really overjoyed. I can see the, the, oh, yeah, the dude. clearness of your consciousness in your eyes. You're yeah. so excited. Yeah, I definitely am. I, I just, <laughs> a spiritual awakening has happened to me. And I hope and I hope for everybody on the planet to get this, you know, because yeah. it is like the best feeling ever. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no feeling like this. And you'll be yeah. joy. You'll just feel the joy come on you, and you'll just be smiling all the time. Like I can't stop smiling. <laughs> it's just awesome. Well, uh, and I guess this person Abdulazi, brother, I have my story. It is in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Where's Pennsylvania? Almost sounds like Transylvania. <laughs> can you explain uh, Abdulazi where Pennsylvania is? Because I have no idea where you talk where that is. Um, but where you know right now you're watching encounters. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show. I had four or five people requesting to come on live tonight, which is great. Um, so you know the commander will uh, tell me, uh, Abdul D, what happened where you are. Uh, before I bring people up, I need to know a little bit about your background. It's, uh, you know that's really I want to know when the people say bring me up, bring me up. I'm not just going to bring people up unless I know specifically what is going on. Yeah. Um, 
You know what I mean? And he knows. Exactly. Knows it. So yeah, Brandon you got has experiences in a story. That's the kind of person I'm bringing up. Mm -hmm. I need to know in this sentence or two why you want to come on live on the show. Uh, I love to interview people, but I'm not going to bring up. I've done it before, and I want to make you, sure. We can't have negativity know. up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to make sure everything is on the up and up with my guests. Yeah. And it's all for, for audience's sake. Um, you know, I protect my audience with my show. I'm a professional broadcaster on radio, so I know what I'm doing. Believe me when I say that. And I'm right here. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. I the opposite. I definitely know, feel that you know what you're doing. That's why I like to come up. You know, I like to share my story about <laughs> how you can be divine if you want it. You know what I mean? And they'll yeah. show you. They'll show you. It's just uh, med meditation is like key to having the finding light. It really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I swear, the more you meditate, the more they'll show you things and then you'll feel it yeah. in your gut. You'll feel it in your heart, your spirit, your soul. And it's like a lightning bolt of energy you'll get. It's just, I can't, it's like the, I can't explain it in human words. You know what I mean? It is just. Yeah. It just can't some, be, and you can never put it into words because the feeling you get from them in the ships, because they're sending you energy in the Octorian, in the Octorians, in the Anunnaki ships that you're seeing now that are protecting you. Yeah. You know, you know what it feels like, you know, you know what's going on with it says, um, yeah and you can feel like like just going to the store or going you know somewhere like that you can feel i feel energy on people now and i feel it's just it's crazy like i can feel what who is like of the light and who is of the darkness just by walking through walmart like i've yeah. got that sense of uh enlightenment and yeah. it's it's a very loving gift like the discernment of spirits like i talked about last time like right. it's very uh you just gotta wait for it if you want it yeah. you gotta wait and be patient and yeah. it will come if yeah. you want it brandon says it's very true folks if you are patient uh it will happen mm -hmm. um you know it definitely will happen and um I appreciate the updates of what's happening up uh, where you are, you know? Yeah. Definitely. All right, Brent. Okay, Brandon. Uh, I want to thank right. you for coming up with an update here. And uh, oh, it's I fine. know the next time I have you up here, you're going to tell us that you were on the spaceship. Oh, I definitely know I will. <laughs> will. Y'all have a good night. I'm going to let somebody else jump up here. I'm going to continue watching. Okay. I'm going to take some chances here. And if I see it going the wrong way, I'll be going the dump button on my screen here so uh, I, I, I send light to all y'all and positivity and just be patient <laughs> that's it I think those are good words to live by everyone yeah. say uh clap for brandon for being a uh, good guest and also <coughs> excuse me as host of the show i will choose my next guest i'm not forced into picking a person i will do that i'm gonna take a chance here oh that other person left Huh. Let's see here. Abdul Laziz says, five days before I go to the United States of America, I was thinking how to get to the United States of America, then someone coming to me to go. Can you explain what you mean by that, Abdul Z? He says, five days before going to USA, I was thinking how to get to the United States of America, then someone coming to me to go. Uh, what? I don't get the relationship to our show here which deals with the cosmic realm, UFOs, ETs, space people, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, mer people, fairies. I'm trying to figure out where that falls into our topic. My feeling is it probably doesn't. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm gonna read carefully. Trust the process. Were you abducted? Let's see here. Take video. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, let's see here. Oh, let's see. I think Cuddy303, you have a story, I believe, Cuddy. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, Barbie has been on before. Uh, we'll bring Barbie up in a, a minute, I think. I just want to see short story. I want to bring up, you got a short story. I'm just reading people's comments here. 
How do you feel about pyramids and the stone carved bowls? Uh, Kevin, in terms of the pyramids, uh, there are pyramids that are in our oceans and there are pyramids that are not. Uh, I think uh, my understanding of the pyramids uh, and Cuddy, we'll bring you up too. I know you have a story. Hey, Bobby Rocks, good to see you, brother. And uh, the pyramids are definitely created and put here on Earth by our star family, by the space people. So uh, in terms of the thing, that the other part of your comment, I don't know much about that part. Uh, let's see here. Pyramids, yes. Stone carved bowls, I am not seeing. I haven't really focused on stone carved bowls, uh, so I'm not really sure about that too much. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. I am Maya. Source created source creator created the pyramids. Hey, for all relatives, welcome to the show. Whoops. And welcome everybody to the show. If you're just tuning in. This is Encounters, the number one spiritual UFO talk show. We're here to bust the matrix and just let people know what our topics are here so you don't think it's a free-for-all because it isn't. Uh, this show is dedicated to talking about things like people having visitations by space people, uh, mer people, uh, fairies. Uh, we talk about crop circles, the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch, um, uh, all of these things in this area, anything in the galactic realm. Uh, the uh, the Agartha Network, Inner Earth, the people that live in our Inner Earth or our planet, everything galactic, no paranormal discussion. We don't talk about any of the paranormal stuff. There's 10,000 other TikTokers or YouTubers that are focused on that. When you come here, you're coming into a show that's out of this world. Remember that. So let me see here. Uh, depending on what I hear when I put a guest on here, I'm going to take one person on here now. I'm going to bring on as a short story. I'm bringing on Barbie. Uh, Barbie was a recent guest, and Barbie is coming back because I know Barbie. Hey, how are you, uh, Commander? Good, good evening. How are you? Good, good. Um, we spoke uh, a couple weeks back. I, I'm, I'm a fellow New Yorker. I was from Gar yeah. I'm from Garden City, and you said yes. I think you said you were from like Plainview or something. Yeah, years but, ago. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I just have a short story, and and I was actually um, I think I might have uh shared it with you before but um maybe some of your new followers haven't heard it and i was reminded because um it yeah i mean I, I was your your guest a couple of um spots ago um freeman yeah wow yeah. i mean I, he blew my mind that was, was amazing wasn't he those are incredible stories and yeah. um i mean it, it seemed he's he's absolutely credible and what took me by surprise was that he described the triangle shaped um, ship that I saw. So, oh, okay. I, and I'll start with the story. I'll, I'll just say um, I was um, a teenager. I was, I think it was like 16, 17. And I'm up, I'm up in Maine, and Maine is known for all the lakes. And we're having this um, beach party on, it, it was probably maybe like, 25 of us were having a, a beach party and we're having a huge barn fire. And, um, so the night's progressing, like we're all partying. And, and then, um, as the night is dwindling down, people will start leaving. So there was maybe like pockets of people around a, a big barn fire that was burning out. You know, it was still, it was still going, but it wasn't by no means as high as it used to be. So, um, so, it was getting late. It was probably like one thirty ish, maybe two in the morning. Actually, no, probably like one one thirty ish. And um, so I'm laying flat on my back, and I'm and I'm having um, a couple of beers with like my friend, my friend yeah. Dave, and we're flat on our backs on the sand, and we're not in the water. We, we're fully clothed, but you know the water is maybe like fifteen feet down. You know we're we're on the on the shore of the of the lake, so. Right. I'm on my back. We're looking up at the stars and up in Maine, like uh, up in New England, I'm, I'm sure I think you're there too. Um, you know, you could see the stars, like there's millions of stars. So we're looking at the yeah, stars. Yeah. And what's fun, we used to play this game. Like if you just, um, 
stare at a star, you'll see one moving very slowly out of the corner of your eye. And then all of a sudden you, you look at it and then it'll become a shooting star. So we used to see those all the time. So yeah. we're looking up at the sky and I'm talking to my friend Dave and out of nowhere, like I, I, I just, uh, um, uh, I look up at like my, I'm, I'm looking up, I'm flat on my back and I just took like a swig of my beer and I put it down next to me and I'm still flat on my back. And I noticed that, um, the stars are, are starting to turn black. Like yeah. it, it was like a, like a black piece of paper was just like being like, um, like, uh, moved over my head mm -hmm. and it was, and before I knew it, it was completely over me. It was a huge, uh, black triangle with that yeah. made absolutely no noise, just like what Freeman was talking about. And it was huge. It was like, um, but it, and it, it was, it had to be like, I want to say like two, maybe, maybe like a, like a football and a football field and a half, maybe, maybe High two. Object, yeah. Yeah. It was humongous. And, um, and you know, I, I, I couldn't really judge how close I was to it, but I mm -hmm. would have to say maybe like 30, like 20, 30 feet. It, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't, um, I, I would say like, like if, if you're looking at like a two story house, probably like, right. you know, above the roof, maybe like, 10, 15 feet above the roof. So, um, so this thing just was gliding right over us. And before we knew it, um, you know, before I knew what I was seeing, I looked at my friend right. Dave and he looked at me and we're just, and we're kind of like a little inebriated. So we're, I looked at him, he looked at me and we're just like, we didn't say anything to each other, but we're just like, is that? And, we both like nodded and, and, um, it literally was, it, it was the same thing that, uh, Freeman was talking about the black, right. the huge black triangle. And I remember seeing it. it. It looked like, um, it looked like we, uh, like black granite. It, it looked like black wow. rock. It looked like, yeah. like a rock to me. It was like a shiny yeah. surface, but, um, any, any mentioned something about like had a little tiny sparkle in it. And I, yeah. I, I, like I do remember seeing like a little, I knew it was a shiny surface, but I wasn't that close to it where I could see like sparkle, right. but, but it definitely was, um, it was definitely triangle shaped and, um, it was just, you know, it was there and then it was gone and it was obviously yeah. flying somewhere, but, um, it was, it was destined to go somewhere, right? You, you knew it was going somewhere. Like yeah. it had to be going to a certain, they came from somewhere. It was going somewhere. And did you get the feeling that it was reverse engineered technology or did you think it was extraterrestrial or what did you think? I had no idea. I mean, it was literally like I was lying on my, on my back, like, you know, just mm -hmm. reflecting on the night, you know, just, you know, hanging out with my friends and, yeah. and all of a sudden I look up in the sky and, and I see what I see. And I'm like, you know, it, it before I knew what I was seeing, it was gone. It was, yeah. but it was moving very, it wasn't moving fast by any means. It was probably moving, you know, it was moving, uh, slowly, but, but fast. In yeah. respect to, and that wasn't something that you ever forgot either. I mean, what year was that by the way? It was in the nineties. So it was like, uh, yeah. let me think, um, I graduated in 95. So it had to be, it had to be like 93, 93. Okay. 93, yeah. 93, 92, 93. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And, and it was, oh my God, it was, I mean, it, it, it just, when Freeman was talking about it, it just totally were, put me back in that, in that time. And you I was, remembered it, except it, there was a similar, hearing his story about the triangular craft that had no humans on it. It was an AI operated intelligent craft without any human beings operating the craft. Yeah, that's what he and said. And it was obviously reverse engineered. Yeah, that's what he, that's what he said. I mean, it's yeah. so, it's so funny that, uh. You know, it, it, th that's why the site is, I mean, this, um, your, your show is like, so, uh, it's, it's really cool because it, it's like a place where people can confirm what they saw and, and, uh, yeah. you know, it just really, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I wasn't, I'm not crazy. Uh, like it's, it, it really, you know, now, you you're saw not, now, I saw now you know you're not, I bet there's 10,000 other people or maybe a hundred, couple hundred others that had similar experience to, to you and, uh, our earlier guest in terms of you know, something like these triangular craft. We have a lot of reverse engineered technology 
that is so, you know, that people just don't know about. Yeah, no uh, doubt. That, it's, it's like, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this this stuff, like all the crashes and everything that, yeah. you know, from the 50s or whatever, whatever it is, but all this stuff, I mean, it can't, you know, these stories are too, uh, there, there's too much detail in some of these stories that you can't really yeah. dismiss them. And I think last time when we spoke, we spoke about like what, what really did it for me was that, um, that, um, that sighting that was over, there was some sighting in Jerusalem, I think it was like over that tower. Oh yeah. Many years ago it was documented. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the thing is, it was like, it was documented by so many people in so many different areas. And there was this one clip on, on the internet where they superimpose like, or they, they juxtapose, I mean, um, like five cameras at the same time. And so it's definitely, it, it, there was no way it could be staged. And it was literally like, it, it's, it, it will blow your mind. I, I yeah. encourage anyone to, to go, uh, who, who doesn't believe, like, go look at that video and that will, yeah. that will turn you into a believer. It's the, um, it's Jerusalem temple or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there were multiple that's witnesses like that happened in the nineties, I think. I can't remember when it, it might have been nineties or early two thousand. Yeah, and um, it, it literally is just mind blowing. Yeah, no, it is. You know, you can and the and videos the speed, are still up of it on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, and and the speed at which these things move, it's just crazy. But you know what? You know what really puzzles me, uh, Commander, that you know some of these vehicles are really, really small. Like, I wonder yeah. if they're just like one man or two man vehicles. And and some, like, well, some of them not, could be also. Uh, if it's extraterrestrial or if it's reverse technology, it could be um, reverse te- technology with a small unmanned craft. If it's extraterrestrial, it could be, if it's a really small craft, it could be sent to monitor things on Earth from the bigger mothership way out. Oh, yeah, kind of like a probe. Yep. Yeah. That's the yeah, that too. Yeah. And I, yeah. Thought, um, I thought what Freeman was going to talk about, he, he said that there was still – um, one thing that he couldn't talk about. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever seen this on the internet, but there, there was this thing called, um, I think they nickname it the mechanical jellyfish or something. And yeah. that thing is a it creep the heck out of me. It's really, if you've ever seen that, it's really amazing. It, it's really, uh, it's, it's something to, uh, like, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's absolutely nuts. And, um, it's- I would just say, take a moment. We're at 26.3 likes here. We want to get up to 100,000 likes before 130. At 130, we're going to end the show for tonight. But uh, please tap my screen in order to see where the hearts are. If you tap my screen, everybody, we will get up to 100,000. You have to tap my screen on my profile here on my side where you see me moving. That will increase the likes on the screen. So if you're not sure how that works, you have to tap, or else nothing happens. If you don't tap the screen, the likes stay the same. As you tap, you know, I mean, I can out tap anybody on here. Just to give you just an idea of just for a break moment here, I'm tapping real quick. See how quick I'm tapping? I'm out tapping everybody. That's, that's, that's like within a nanosecond. And that's with one finger I'm tapping. So I can tap, out tap anybody here, pretty much, I think. Okay, we'll get Oz up here. Next, uh, Barbie, I want to thank you for being here. Yeah, no problem. I, I have actually just one more thing to say, and then, okay. I'll, then I'll go. Um, so really quick, I think something, uh, it's within the past few days, something uh, has come up in the news. I don't know if you heard about the, those guys in Las Vegas who had um, a sighting in their backyard um, where, where like a couple of be- bean beings were in their backyard. Well, that was a couple months ago when that happened, yeah. Yeah, but the, uh, new video surfaced where – there's um like there's a camera behind one of them and they you can actually see um uh they're they're claiming that the the aliens had like some sort of like you know in like the movie predator predator they had uh it kind of had like a mirror cloak um well this yeah this new video shows like almost evidence of that so check it out yeah and um, we'll have to take a look at that yes all right Barbie, so thank you. Night. I Thanks. also, uh, I, I'm also got uh, my hat, the the hat with the mustache. 
I need seven more people to get a hat with a mustache for me. And uh, that's my goal tonight. Uh, thanks, Barbie, for coming up and sharing your story, uh, as always. And uh, this is Encounters, the late night uh, talk show here on UFO spiritual areas, uh, people that have been visited. I'm bringing Oz up here, Oz for 200. And if you wish to be a guest, after Oz, just uh, go into the request mode where it says guests and tell me a little bit about yourself before I bring you up. I'm going to bring Oz for 200 up now. Uh, he was a, They were a recent guest on our show before. It's been a pretty active night here tonight, so we're trying to go by the list of people. Oz for 200, welcome to Encounters. Yeah, thanks for letting me up. Oh, I just want to let everybody know, guys. I'm getting real, real fed up with the TikTok app, guys. Uh, I've been on here one year straight talking about the same thing every single day. And still, people are not realizing what happened, guys. Oh, I caught a little monster in my bedroom, guys. I'm not lying. Oh, I've been telling people to check my page for years straight. They've been hiding the video every single day from sun up to sun down, guys. Even in the middle of nighttime. So, if, so let me uh, stop you for just a minute. Because we don't talk about, you know, paranormal stuff or things like that. We... We focus really on the UFO stuff. We have done before. So we want to keep it focused on anything dealing with it. It could be you've been abducted by space people or oh, it's negative. Not a, no, it's not paranormal. I caught a real shape shifter in my bedroom. They've been hiding the video. Oh, okay. Shifters, all right. Got it all on video, live stream. They're mad I caught it on video. All right. And uh, when did this happen? last year in october mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're watching everything i do you're watching this too right now let me ask you bunch a question of suckers. let me ask you a question bunch of nerds is what they are let bunch of nerds question. you hear me let me ask yeah, you a question yeah, listen, would, you, would you like assistance in preventing any of that from happening again would you like assistance no i would not i heard you the last time you said you wanted to send a spaceship over my house i don't need i got spaceships all over my house i don't need any more right well, right, but are you having? But you're saying this thing looked like a monster. Obviously, it's not a positive no, no, situation. No, no, it was right. a monster. I didn't look like one. Was a monster, shape shifting monster. And what is the shape shifter doing? Shape shifting monster. What it was. What is the what is the what is the shape shifter doing in your home watching you? What's going on? I don't know. That's why I've been trying to tell everybody for years straight, but nobody listened to me. Not just in my house, probably in yours too. Everybody else is not just mine. That's why I've been trying to do. People don't want to be listening to me. Wait, I got I got to do something right now, though, guys. Everybody just check my page. Oh, they've been hiding the video for years straight. Oh, and I'm getting ready to go back outside and show everybody again if they keep hiding. Oh, wait. That was weird. That was a little bit weird, folks. You know? Anyway. But uh, what are you going to do? All right. Let's see who else we got coming on here. <laughs> you know, when you want to help people, I don't, sometimes I read energy. Uh, I'm going to bring I am Maya up here. She's up in uh, Vermont. And I am Maya. Welcome to Encounters. Hello. Hey, I am Maya. Good to meet you. Uh, welcome. How are you? <laughs> We're doing good. Uh, and uh, my last guest uh, I didn't know how to read that too much, but welcome to Encounters, and we're glad to have you with us. Thank you. I I messaged you before. We spoke before. I was going to yeah. try to catch you late night. I'm usually asleep by this time, so yeah, yeah. I, I caught you. So I was like, let me jump on and uh, share my crazy story with you. Well, no story is crazy on this show, but go ahead. <laughs> um, well, no, I love what you're doing. I love, I love what you're doing. I think it's awesome. Um, we need more people like you out there. Um, what I, I had a question for you before I go into it. What, what do you consider um, paranormal that's not connected to UFO? How do you decide? So like I, I traditionally, because I've been a contactee. 
so I'm very adamant in because of my my history that um, anything paranormal to me is things like ghosts, things that deal with anything non-related to extraterrestrial intelligence, things that aren't cosmic, things that aren't galactic. If it's not about the inner earth or the people living, advanced civilizations living in the Agartha network, or the, you know, if we're not talking about pyramids or uh, crop circles or mer people or fairies, uh, those things are in the realm of discussion of the cosmic. When we deal with like uh, things that are happening that are paranormal, those are things like ghosts. And I never want to mix any of that up ever. I've, I've made a commitment even on my radio show never to talk about this stuff because there's just enough people on there on TikTok and even on YouTube that are already doing that stuff. And my whole background is not even involved in that. So, you know, I just tell people, if you're going to come on the show, keep all that stuff. If you're having that experience, you know, for somewhere else to talk about it, there's other people that'll handle those discussions. Me, I don't want to get into any of that stuff. I just really principally won't do it as a, as a talk show host. And just because of my galactic and cosmic, connections with the Astro Command and my cosmic family, I just will stay away from it. I don't want to even go into it. Interesting. Okay, cool. And, and good to know. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of background about who I am. Um, so I am, I'm a quantum healer. I do quantum hypnosis. I'm also a radio DJ, a podcast. I do a podcast. Oh, um, good. Yeah, it, it's it's par it's all things paranormal. So it's UFOs, aliens, ghosts, everything under the rainbow. Um, so what I do is I I help people connect through like hypnosis, and we do past, present, parallel, future uh, lives. You know, I take people to the Akashic records. I have a spaceship. We travel the universe. I got a Star Trek team, like the whole nine yards. We just we do the most. I'm doing the most right now. I don't know anyone that's doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So like I so I, I talk with aliens, you know, I deal with reptilians. I actually liberate them when I do my hypnosis sessions. Um, so for me, what got me into this was when I was a kid, when I was three, um, I apparently opened a portal and I didn't hmm. know because I was only three. Yeah. Uh, and then like my whole life, my family was telling me that I was possessed by demons because we were Catholic. So I was hallucinating, I was seeing things, um, and I was only a kid and I didn't know what was going on. And then when I was like, you, I would say a teenager, I had all these crazy experiences that most star seeds experience, you know, crazy family. Um, I'm a 76 baby. Actually, today, today's the 28th, today's my birthday. So. Oh, um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, but, um, but for me, like I was trying to get out of this world. And so my first experience was when I was 15, I was in a coma for three days cause I was trying to exit this world and it didn't work. And I was so mad when I woke up because it was black, nothing. There was no talking with God. There was nothing. And I was angry mm. and I was like, what happened? Well, fast forward um 15 years later and i did a hypnosis session um no 15 no maybe 20 years later mm -hmm. anyway, don't tell me don't get me counting when i was 40 right before i turned 40 yeah. um i was 15 when i had this experience when i was 40 i found out through a hypnosis session i had done with alba wyman that i was abducted by um the syrians and they had, they abducted me because um, my family was not spiritual. They were very dark. They were alcoholics, a lot of drugs, a lot of darkness, and a lot of trauma. So and let me slow you down for a minute. You were you, you know, the Syrians are. You know, the, sometimes maybe the word abduction is not the right terminology. Were you a contactee with the Syrians? Well, I call it adjustment now, but it was like my, what people would think is an, a, an abduction, but they actually adjusted my frequency. So it was for the benefit of me. It was for a positive right. thing. So, you know, so when I heard the word, my life history of interviewing people and I've met people like Bud Hopkins who wrote books about people that were hypnotized that were abducted, abductions are ne more used definitionally to negative in, uh, connotations. You they took you obviously in a sense you could you can use it like loosely termed but they 
they didn't hurt you or anything, right? They, uh, they, did they hurt you? No, they, all they did was they, they adjusted my frequency and sent right. me back. Um, ironically, after that, I went on a crazy spiritual journey. And so it, it worked. I come to find out later, right? Cause now I'm, I'm actually, um, studying hypnosis and quantum healing and I'm helping people regain their memories back. Well, the reason why the Syrians, uh, were watching me is because when I was in Atlantis, my mother was and father was from Sirius. And I found out that my mother and father was Isis on Osiris. And ironically, I found my brothers, some of my brothers, a couple of my brothers and my, my sisters, there's a lot of us, but I found them in this life, ironically. So you know how we're coming back to our soul family. So I'm getting a lot of my story and my galactic history from doing hypnosis sessions with other people. And it's quite fascinating how, how we are all connected when you do, we have no idea. Like I met these people randomly on like Mm -hmm. social media apps. I right. just randomly did a session with them come to find out we're soul family. Right. right. And so, yeah, it's interesting. I have quite the story. I, I found out I was connected to Cleopatra, Mary Magdalene. I mean, like, it's crazy. And I got to speak with Cleopatra too, which was really nice. Um, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing now is I'm here to help people save themselves because nobody is coming to save you. You have to save yourself. And uh, it's interesting. So I talk to aliens all the time. I deal with all of them. Like I even help like great, I, what, the ones that I don't save, but I do get to talk to are the archons. So I do talk to them. I talk to the hybrids. I talk to the parasites that I find in people's bodies and I remove them. And uh, it's quite fascinating. Like it's, it's interesting. I have this group called the Cosmic Crusaders. We're like a Star Trek team and we travel the universe. We have a spaceship. We have med beds. I bring people on to get healing. It's quite, it is quite fascinating. Honestly, I mean, you know, living in this day and age. Let me ask you a question. Okay. The way really of all the things, the Syrians, the, the, the Syrian beings that took you on their ship. And I read energy from everybody I interview. And if you watch my show, you probably already know that. So I'm getting for you that your connections are with the Syrian space people. What did they look like? Can you tell me? I didn't get to see what they look like. I didn't see anything. It was just blackness. Um, I didn't see nothing. I, but apparently that's a good thing. Um, I did not, I didn't see anything. Apparently my connection to to the family though is Pleiadian. So even though my Pleiadian, I, my, I'm, I'm a Pleiadian crystal star seed. Um, and I'm also, uh, Andromedan and Vagan and Ectorian from what I apparently when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you talk in those terms, people, the way you can understand it, cause understand something we've had many intergalactic lifetimes that we were either Pleiadian, you could be Syrian, you could be Andromedan. So that would be not on, uh, you know, unlikely because I've had guests on who have said, I, I feel connected to this particular group of uh, space people in this group. Uh, for me, my, my family is on a spaceship. If you watch my show, uh, there are five of us that are going physically, uh, probably within a, less than 12 months, uh, that are going off planet physically, um, with the Astro Command, which I've been with the Astro Command before I came to Earth. I've been with the Astro Command when I came to Earth. And I'm really, I've been very well activated when I was a kid, but I didn't know anything about when you're a kid, you're, you're just a kid being an earth human. But I had, as I became an adult, I was fully activated in, uh, in the whole a- aspects of where I come from. I come from Mars, which is, I talk about 10 to 15 million inhabitants are on the planet. So I've talked people about the planet Mars because there's a lot of disinformation about planet Mars, which is not true. So, you know, what, uh, for me, when I share some stuff here, it's to let you know that, well, you know, there's a group of us here that are going to be one of our group, the lead person in our group, uh, her name is April, and she's in Vermont also. We met through TikTok, and um, a number of other people in our group have all met, a lot of people have met that way, but there are five of us in the region here, 
uh, in New Jersey, Connecticut, Long Island, uh, and of course Vermont, that will be going on board physically on a spaceship. And uh, we're going to be doing some mission work and then coming back to bring our information back to the people of Earth. So this is all real, real time information that we're show, sharing. And if you listen Friday night, that's our, our Friday night uh, show here is uh, Ashtar Command Q&A. And we also have the Ashtar Command uh, with April uh, that will uh, communicate through one of our other phones. Uh, and also when we uh, have them play music, they'll play messages and music that have a meaning and a relationship to people. And uh, so I just want to share that with you because you're in Vermont. Uh, I think you would enjoy that. Nice. That sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got to talk to Dr. Stephen Greer and I told him yeah. about what I found out about, because I talked to N. the Naki, I talked to, I talked to all kinds of different aliens and I asked all these questions. And I asked him if he could confirm or deny, like, or agree. And he actually confirmed what I said. And I was quite impressed and shocked because I was mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, in somebody in the community, I'm actually getting ready to go to my very first conference in July um, um, f as a speaker, which I'm very nervous about. Mm -hmm. But I'm speaking from the, from the perspective of my own personal experiences. I've had so many experiences, my psychic awakening, like seeing a UFO, um, all these crazy things, like, you know, um, and then... Can I ask a question? Uh, in terms of your real-time physical experiences with the UFO, tell us a story of, were you living in Vermont when you saw your UFO or first spaceship? No, I was, live, I was in Los Angeles. I'm Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. So when you're, what year was that when you saw that? I, I, I usually call it extraterrestrial or spaceships. So tell us about that. That was about 2010, and it was in the middle of my second, second or third phase of psychic awakening. I would say, I had started already hearing voices. Um, and, um, I was always manifesting things and I had been yelling at the universe for a year that I wanted to see a UFO. And I was, I demanded and demanded and demanded. And I was, I was, I met, and I, then I said, I want to meet people who have seen UFOs because I want to start hearing the stories so I can manifest that, manifest it. That's what I believed in my heart. And so I, I went with it and I, ironically, I met this guy. He told me he had seen a, a UFO with a friend of his who had already seen a UFO. So I was like, wow, that was really cool. And me and him were driving one day on the highway in Los Angeles. And I look up on, and it looked like, at first I thought it was like a plane going by, you know, LA, but it wasn't moving. And then I, I was like, well, maybe it's a helicopter. Mm -hmm. And it move and it, it looked like the moon literally dropped on top of us like it was yeah. so huge wow. but it was like a it was like a dull light so it was like the moonlight but it was dull it wasn't like yeah. and bright it was like a uv lamp like it or i don't even know how to describe it but it was like just a soft light and so i told my friend i'm like what is that and he's yeah. like roll the window down and so i rolled the window down and I'm looking and it's this gigantic, just bright light. And I look and I squint my eyes and I look behind it and I see a shadow and it was round and I see a shadow behind it, like a soft shadow of a disc behind it. And then yeah. I look closely and I see these little tiny lights sparkling in all different directions. And oh, it's wow. like, it was like green and, and blue. And I don't know if it was like red yeah. or oh, I can't remember. Did you get any feeling when you saw it? Like, did you get the feeling? And I'm going to ask you how you freed the reptilians. Some people are asking me the question to ask you about that. And I do want to get back to that in a moment. But can you tell us, like, what you were feeling with this big object, with these different colors? What were you getting from that? I was excited. I was super excited. And I felt like they finally answered my call. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a strong believer in asking you shall receive and i just felt i felt excited i felt good i felt good with the person that i was with i felt like he was very um i don't know there was something about him very angelic in some sort of way i don't know he just was very just 
there was something yeah. about him and the whole thing was just very mystical um i don't it was just interesting you know i felt good vibes though i, I have no idea they won't tell me who it was they tell me they just they laugh at me they're like yeah we can't tell you that yet i've also had two hours of missing time but that was in vermont okay um, we're gonna get to that too you just brought up now you just brought up something very interesting you know two hours of missing time in vermont uh but let's get to the reptilians and i want to ask you about the missing time so how did you free the reptilians because we like let me t give you a backstory here um We've been actually rounding up the reptilians and we're sending them off planet. This is real. And this is not like a, a fictional story account. This is really happening. And uh, we are finding them wherever they are around their planet Earth. They're being sent up off planet in a staging area uh, and they're being sent back out into space. They can't come back. Uh, they have an option to change, you know, the, what they've been doing. But uh, for the most part, they're being taken off planet. Tell us about what you did in terms of with the reptilians, what your experience has been, and how you got involved with dealing with them. Are you still there? Yes. So basically, what happened and, for me was yeah. um, when I first started doing the hypnosis healing when I got into the QHT stuff, the Dolores Cannon technique, I went into it because I thought I was being abducted by aliens. And so I needed to know like what I could do to protect myself. And I had no idea what I was, what rabbit hole I was falling down. Yeah. And so the lady that in my session, she found seven entities that were residing in my body from trauma that I had experienced in this life mm -hmm. and past lives. And so I was like, oh my goodness, this is next level. Um, I need to know how to do this. So I studied Dolores Cannon from Dolores Cannon's assistant. And she gave you the option to remove entities. And then uh, my teacher came out with uh, aura hypnosis, which is the next level, which deals with um, everything, which deals with, oh my gosh, it deals with uh, uh, reptilians, dra uh, grays, um, draconians, uh, implants, portals, cables, hooks. Um, I can remove the vaccine. I can upgrade you. I can, I can, we, we're regrowing teeth. Like I tell people like with the frequency of love, anything is possible. Miracles can happen. And we have it in our body to change our body and we can heal ourselves with just the intention. So in these sessions, I was like, I need to do this. And so I did it for myself. I had my own session done and I needed to know what it was like. I had people in my family that were on drugs and I couldn't get them. They were like hooked on drugs. My brother was on meth for 20 years and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I did a hypnosis session and I did a ancestral healing and I put bubbles of love and protection around all my family members. And I cleared all the, my family members from dark energies and traumas and can i tell you within a year my everybody was clean and my brother had been on crystal meth for 22 years he is now clean and I, I you know i'm not trying to take all the credit but i do like to say miracles can happen you know and anything can happen with the frequency of love and that's what i do so when i started to do the, this hypnosis stuff i was like wait a minute i can go into people's i can with the help of your higher self i can help you go scan your body we do body scans so it's like psychosis yeah. And we, we, with the help of your higher self and the archangels, we tap into your body and ascended masters and whoever else you choose to help you heal. Um, and we scan your body. And so when I find energies, entities, reptilians, I lovingly remove them. So what I do is I trap them in a box. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you have to know what you're doing. You know, you can't just play around, but I tell people at least try to put them in a box. Um, you put them in a box so they're, they're trapped. And then you give them the option, like you said, they have an option to positive polarize because right now earth is ascending and there's only two options here. You either positive polarize or you're done. You don't get to keep and them. Have you, and have you, and I appreciate you sharing that for some of the people watching about how you deal with the reptilians. 
Have you, uh, you said you were abducted at one time? Yes. And what year was that? I call it, um, when I was 15, when I was 15, that's when I tried to commit suicide and they took me for three days on a spaceship. Um, but then I have been taken as well when I was driving, I had those two hours loss of time. So yeah, that's missing time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did um, driving. So let me ask you a question. Are you now not having any more of those situations of, uh, any negative, you know, connections or things happening with ETs that are negative or anything in your life? So, um, no, not anymore. So in 2012, I started my third phase of my spiritual awakening, which was mm -hmm. the student. So the first thing that I was given was uh, psychic protection and psychic surgery. I had shamans work on me. They initiated me into shamanhood, which mm -hmm. I knew was coming. Um, and from that point on, I learned the first basics, which is protect yourself, protect your aura. So that was the first thing that the universe gave me. And once I mm -hmm. learned that, they gave me yoga and that taught me how to, you know, you know, what yoga teaches you everything. Right. And so mm -hmm. that was the next gift I got. So I became a yoga teacher. Ironically, it was divinely planned. I never, it, it, that's a long story, but it, yeah. I, it was divinely planned. Um, I actually had an angel give me a yoga mat on a, um, on a blind date. Mm. That's, that's a short story of it. Okay. <laughs> he gave me this yoga you. mat that had poses. Next thing you know, I'm getting certified and it's the same poses that I had on the mat and had no idea I'd been teaching this without even knowing. So, um, they gave me yoga to teach me about the breathing and connection. Um, and then from that, I went into Reiki. I had a necromancy experience. I had a dog die and we brought this dog back to life with prayer and putting our hands on mm -hmm. this dog. So I went into healing. I knew that I had healing. So now, um, as I've done my own work, I've done my spiritual healing. I've got to the point where I can master unconditional love. I'm able to teach people how to protect themselves, how to heal themselves. So that's what I do. My focus, I teach people mm -hmm. how to protect yourself from entity right. attachments, from psychic, psychic attacks. That's number one. You have to, that's the number one basic you have to learn is to protect right. your aura. And it's very simple. You just use your intention, activate your bubble of love around you. That's right. You know, so and that's very similar to what I go very directly and do is whenever I do my show here, a lot of sometimes people don't know it, but I, I I'm always working. I have four space people in my house from the Ashtar command that would be all the time. And but I also put a bubble of protection on my show every night. So I don't ever say it. Well, sometimes I say it, but I, I put a protection. This show is well protected by the Ashtar Command all the time. I've never, ever been not protected here. And uh, I work in Christ consciousness constantly in everything I do, even on the show and whatever I do, I'm always putting a, uh, a protection. And you're right, uh, you're to help people learn how to do a simple thing like protection of their of their whole physical being is, is really important. Well, you know, you've been a, a very uh, beautiful guest. And uh, how could people who want to be hypnotized or learn more. Some people uh, who can't remember some of their experiences off planet want to, you know, I've been hypnotized to somebody years ago before there was internet who hypnotized me and took me back to Atlantis of all places. But um, how could people get in touch with you as a, you know, if they want to be uh, getting some help and remembering things or they're blocked from remembering certain experiences off planet? How can you be, uh, how can people get in touch with you? Um, I like people to go to my website because it's, it will take you everywhere, you know, SOSQHT.com, Saving mm -hmm. Our Souls Quantum Hypnosis Therapy is what it stands mm -hmm. for. Um, you have access to, you can see my YouTube videos. It takes you to my YouTube videos. I also have some transcripts on there from sessions that aren't on videos. And mm -hmm. one of them is one of my first six, seven, eight, nine session. We went to mm -hmm. Mars. We went to Mars in the 43rd dimension and earth had already been blown up. And so it, they had remnants of earth and Mars. And yeah, so that earth must have been in the parallel earth. universe because it's not this earth here. We're going uh, in a good way, even though it looks weird. 
uh, Planet Earth is going to be actually in a good place. This one here, uh, just so you know. Well, the thing is, is that we're in a two-third world split. We got the fifth dimension, and people are already living in the fifth dimension. And so when I asked, like, well, what happens when, you know, when it splits completely? But apparently we're also moving up to the sixth dimension because we've already been in the fifth dimension. So you have people that are going to be in the third dimension, and then you have the fifth dimension, and then apparently the sixth dimension because the fourth dimension is a different dimension. And, and people should know that there, there's no limit to dimensions. When I was growing up as, you know, into the whole spiritual realm of cosmic enlightenment, I used to hear always about the fifth dimension constantly. I said, oh, we're going to get to the fifth dimension. But now that I'm fully awakened on my mission on Earth and the things I've seen, that there are many, many dimensions. Like if people think there's like six or seven dimensions, uh, -uh it's unlimited. Well, there, there's no ending and there's no really beginning. It's just up, 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 up. We just have to be where we are consciously to evolve into that dimensional frequency or vibration but you're right i mean you know uh we're going we're not really in the third dimension anymore although we are seeing third dimensional things happen on earth we are conscious the consciousness of many people here your consciousness is not 3d it is much higher than that although we are living on earth as humans we experience all the realities of what's going on here good bad and indifferent but we as individual beings are are ascending to a higher level of light and uh i want to thank you for uh for being on here from vermont uh i appreciate your uh your being uh, on the program yeah thank you always I, I do catch you when i'm awake every so often so i'm just like super excited that you're doing what you're doing because yeah, thank uh, you. we need people out there that are are holding the space so yes well, and yeah, I'm and we're busting, radio, so yeah I'm, we bust the matrix on here so uh there you go so yeah, if you would like, I would also wouldn't mind having you on my radio show as well, since you're uh, not too far from us. You know, um, it's a public radio. It's mid, it's from ten to midnight. It's adult hour, so there's no uh, censoring. We could talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about. What, so if, what station are you on? A radio station somewhere in Vermont? Yes, it's one hundred seven point seven FM, and it's the Mad Chatter Show from. 10 to midnight and it's wvew.org and we live stream so you can definitely listen to really? it yeah yeah you, I'll, we'll hook up i would definitely uh come on your show i'll do it yeah well, i've messaged you we've chit chatted before so you might see me yeah yeah old message. I, yeah, just message me again it, it's been so crazy uh, <laughs> with everything going on around the planet but definitely yeah. do it i'll come on okay well you have a wonderful night thank you for talking to me <laughs> yeah Right, you too, you too. Love. Have a blessed night too. And uh, I am Maya in Vermont. All right. And uh, we're up to about 61,000. No, what am I saying? Yeah, actually 6,100. I'm telling you, my, my consciousness is all over the place, folks. But anyway, welcome to, welcome to the show. So we are going to do some more interviews. Uh, we're going to go till about 2. I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I want to get everyone to thank you for all the gifts. I still have a number of those hats. I have two more hats left with the mustache, and I will do a special word for people that I get those hats. You will hear me say something, but it only happens when I wear the specific hat with a mustache, and this is helping support the the program and the things we do here in a very tar way thank you thank you thank you Rubu. and i have one hat left if you've never you know if you want to see me do something that's very popular and it has been done before but i only do it here on this show for you because i love all of you if i get the hat with the mustache i will do it again you know, and but if you want to be a guest on the show too, you have to be over 18. No foul language, no drinking, no smoking, no paranormal discussion. We keep it in the cosmic realm. And that's what I like to do here. Uh, love for peace. Thank you for the roses. We appreciate that very much. Uh, Nora, thank you for the bolt of lightning. We appreciate that very much too. You know. 
And let's keep tapping. We're at almost 70,000. We need to get to 100,000 likes tonight. Um, we're, we're, people are getting, we're, we're getting a little bit lazy here. <laughs> I can probably out tap everybody here. So if I tap right now, I'm tapping so quickly. I'm making the, the thing go on the lineup in the front there. If you can tap as quickly as I can, in like a nanosecond, I'll have over 50 taps right now. I just did 80 taps in less than a minute, or less than a minute. I did 80 taps. Can you do 80 taps with your finger on my profile? I think I can beat everybody right now in taps. Absolutely. The commander can beat everybody in taps to get to 100,000. Um, let's see. Not just Nicole did 92 taps. Oh, yeah, and definitely. I was on April's Live earlier. I'm glad she's doing some live stuff there. Hopefully, she doesn't go off planet tonight. They give her a break. She needs a break from going off planet. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of good stuff happening. A lot of great interviews tonight. This show will be on my YouTube channel. I am backlogged by about two shows. This will be number three. I will have all the shows on uh, on YouTube. You know, no dance party tonight. Okay. Well, that's good. If there's no dance party, she's not going off planet tonight. That's a good thing. And we're getting up there, folks. 72.2. You know, if she's still on after I go off, I might, before I go off planet, I might just hang out and uh, she's still on the line doing broadcasting. And again, thank you. Let's shoot for 100,000. Yes, let's do it. And we'll do one more interview. We have 178 people on here. Tonight we had up to, at one point, we had up to over 500 and something people on here listening to one of our interviews that we did with somebody. Oh, she's no longer live? Okay. Because her green light is on. We've had 5,000 people since 11.35, 11.45 p.m. on here. And again, we want to thank everyone for joining us here on Encounters. We're almost at 100,000. Let's make it happen on the number one spiritual UFO talk show, Encounters. Hey, Spiritual Abstract Charlotte, welcome. Uh, yeah, on my radio show I can. I can't play any music here because I'd wake everybody up in the house. Oh, yeah, breath, Breakfast, are you still there? I'm going to bring you up, man. I'm sorry about that. Breakfast, Fast Club, Wakey Wakey. Uh, I'm bringing you up. You're going to be a guest on the show right now. I have. To, I knew there's somebody I forgot to bring up. And I am truly sorry. Welcome to the show. Let me see. Hopefully the TikTok thing works. We're gonna wait till that. Okay. Welcome, Brad. Hiya. Yeah, hey, I'm sorry about that. Good, evening. Good morning. Hi. Hi. I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, right. so whereabouts are you located? Whereabouts in the world are you located? I'm in. I'm in uh, Nottingham, England. Oh, great. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you with us. And yeah, can you brilliant. bring your Thank camera you for, on? It would be impossible. Yeah. Uh, I'm still in bed because it's like quarter to seven oh, in the morning. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, seven in the morning. Yeah, don't worry about that. So tell us a little bit about your experiences. I was reading your senses earlier tonight. I'd love to hear your story. When did things start happening for you? And let's let's go right into your, your stories. Um. So... I sort of go to recent and then back because it'll explain it a little bit better if that's okay. okay. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I've, I've, I personally, I feel I've always been, if, if you like, awake. But I've, I've sort of had enlightenments at different stages. Um, so 2019, I was had another awakening, and um, I was getting. Some people say spiritual attacks in 2020. Uh, I I kept seeing um, a certain star all the time. I was literally drawn mm -hmm. to this star, 
And my first UFO I saw, um, I was just middle of the day walking down the road and I was like, mind speaking, I don't know why I need to do it. And I was like, I need something. I need to know that you guys are there. And right in front of me, the clouds parted and a huge UFO went from right to left, metallic. Um, and I just got this sense of peace straight away. Um, mm -hmm. Via that, I, I was led to a show. I don't know if you've ever watched it. Um, Journey to Truth. No, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, really amazing. They do a lot of stuff on SSP and things like that. But I was drawn to it, and they had a guest on there. And uh, they started talking about being taken off planet, and uh, that's where the nosebleed thing came up. And they yeah. were talking about nosebleeds, and it dawned to me. I was like, when I was when I was a kid for about four years, and this was happening nightly, I was waking up middle of the night, massive nosebleeds, and that triggered a memory in me. I can't, can't be sure how old I was. I, mm -hmm. I reckon, I, it was definitely before I was nine. Um, I woke up in my bed, and there were two beings at the bottom of my bed. Um, trying to think, probably around four foot tall. Now, I, yeah. I know I wasn't dreaming, um, I've, I tried shouting for my dad, I couldn't get vocalised. And this is how I know I wasn't dreaming, because I physically picked my pillow up and threw it at him. Yeah. Uh, now, and that's where... You, then, what happened when you did that? <laughs> that's the end of the memory. Yeah. And that's... I, and I, I've tried meditating on it. Uh, I've tried numerous things over the, uh, over the last couple of years, but there's like there's definitely a block there. But yeah. then back to more recent time, 2020, 21, 22, I've seen numerous orbs. I've got photos of them on my phone. I've got one, if you zoom in on it, you can literally see a being within. Yeah. Um, I've got a video of another orb going across. Um, and there was, I've even shown people, um, there was like, if you like a star that used to follow me, it sounds bonkers, but the one thing I'll take from this is always trust your intuition. Right. So two parks I could walk my dog in and they'd be like, all of a sudden I'd be like, you need to take the dog to the park. Right, take my dog to the park. I'd be walking around and then you'd get like, look up, looked up. And the only way I could explain it was one of a, one of two things. It was either yeah. the, I saw a star, looked at, drawn to this, a certain star and it either flashed or it just came at me at such speed it looked like a flash. I don't know if that makes wow. any sense to you. Um, and there'd be another one, another star. So if you imagine a football field, I feel like they were just protecting me. I've never got any ill feelings for it. I just get amazing vibrations from them. Um, but getting, I'd be you're getting a positive vibe from the spaceships and all this other stuff happening, correct? Oh, God, yeah. 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 Um, when yeah. I was younger, like the nosebleed stuff, I, like I say, that came back through something triggered that. But that just mm. stopped all of a sudden, literally just stopped. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just quite like to get your thoughts on that because I know you said that potentially could have been something negative, which I, I've heard before. Right. So the part of the thing with the bloody nose, I think, was definitely not positive. But um, but after that happened, you had other experiences where you you have to go by how you feel. So yeah. with these other experiences, now the bloody nose thing. How did you feel about that? It was just, it was straight. Oh, actually, it reminds me of another thing actually that happened back then. It was just yeah. really strange because I was, a, I was a kid. I was being taken back and forth to the doctors, and like I say, I'd, I'd wake up with these nosebleeds constantly. In between that time was when I saw the beings, and there was also another time. But this, this just always outlines to me as really strange. I got taken to a building. This was by my parents. And they were saying it was for my eyesight. But what doesn't mean something just doesn't sit with me on it. Mm -hmm. They hooked me up to all these pads all around my head. And were doing mm -hmm. all sorts of tests on me. And really? you know when... Yeah. So that's always like sat with me. I'm like, something doesn't add up there. Why would they be taking readings? And my dad was like, oh, it's to do with your eyes. But my dad's dad was in the RAF. Um... When you have really so spoken about when they, it. When they took you to this building, this place, what was the building like? Do you remember? All I can remember is thinking it's not a hospital. Which it's not why, a hospital. 
Yeah, it was like uh, it was in the middle of central London. I couldn't tell you because I was so young. Cause I remember it vividly because I went to a friend's birthday party as a kid two days later, and they were asking me about that. Um, so there's a lot of weird things that have happened. That, well, it's not weird. I, I know it's not weird. It's a lot right. of people have other experiences, haven't they? Um, but yeah, I've had loads, loads of sightings. Um, I've been. I, I, there's a guy called Mark Atwood who uh, does a lot of things, and through watching his stuff, I, I've just started. I started mind talking to the stars. If I was drawn to a certain star, I'd uh, I'd say it sounds. Um, I'd ask it to move. And mm-hmm. they would they zigzag in the sky, um, like I say, flashes. I've got videos. And I show people, I even had somebody with me one day, and I used to call it my star. I just felt yeah. it was there protecting me. And I said, look at that star for me and just concentrate on that. Yeah. And he goes, and he said to me, he confirmed, he went, it's changing shape. I went, I know, but to me, it looks like, the only way I can explain it, it changes to like hieroglyphs, if that makes yeah. any sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so these, this is amazing. So you're, you, I, I'm going to have to have you back on, even maybe tomorrow night when it's earlier to talk more with you. Um, can you tell us? Um, you mentioned throwing the pillow at the four foot tall beings that were uh, yeah. in your physical room. Have you seen them again? Have you had other? Uh, I've got no more things? memories. Sorry, uh, mm-hmm. I've got no more memories. Um, like I say, it was only through watching that interview on journey to truth um when they started talking about the nosebleeds it triggered and i was like oh god i remember that when i was a kid because i think sometimes i think i just suppressed it down so much because yeah you told it's nonsense aren't you for years and years and years because i'm I'm 46 now um but yeah it's always been something i mean i've been fascinated all my life with ufos bigfoot even things like loch ness monster I've always just had an inner knowing that it's, yeah. it's all real. I've always known that. Even yeah. like I've got a lot of Irish family and we'd go looking for leprechauns in the fields. I, I was oh, watching yeah. it around, didn't I? Um, so, yeah, then I came across your show yesterday and I, I strongly good. believe there's no such thing as coincidence. Right. There uh, uh, so, yeah, and then to get the opportunity to actually share this. It's like I'm getting tingles now, so it's yeah. definitely. You know, when you're watching the number one spiritual UFO talk show, the only real UFO talk show on on TikTok for truth, it is really yeah. the only actual talk show. There's other people they argue with each other on TikTok. The normal arguing folks, uh, they're not really doing any kind of a show. They're just you know whatever. But this is an actual show, and the background is in radio. Um, yeah, on, on NPR radio in the United States, Pacific Radio. I've been on there for 21 years doing a similar th- show called the cosmic eye on the radio so yeah there's no coincidences you people find my show here and they're addicted to it forever yeah no no it's amazing well the, the, another thing which is strange i've literally only been on tiktok for about a week and somehow got my fo- followers up enough to uh be able to speak tonight with you yeah. so yeah i don't in terms of i don't I hope you don't mind me asking you, you said you pick up on energies what sort of energies if you don't i don't mind you sharing them what sort of energies you do you feel like? what, what energy i pick up on you yeah um well i do know the bloody nose thing when you were a kid that would never be a positive experience if you were to have connections with star people like that are human like us you would yeah. never have that happen the, t- the small beings that were around you physically uh, obviously, you uh, had missing. You, I think you had missing time at that point when you said you yeah. threw the pillow at them. You don't remember anything after that. No, no, and no, um... you had missing time. So here's something that I'd like to do before we end the show tonight. I'm going to do something for you, but I need your permission to do it. Okay. And if you watch only, you're, I know you're new to my show. So I work with the positive star people known as Ashtar Galactic Command or Ashtar Command. Yeah, no, I'm, really I'm not my, Yeah, so what uh, my attention is the first part of your story about the bloody nose, that should not be happening. You know, that, that was, was years you know, ago. That was like 30, what, five years ago now. Right. But uh, I'm still, um, I want to do something that I think is going to really transform a lot of energy that you've experienced 
or anything yeah. regarding early ET connections that were not necessarily positive. And it's good okay. they're not you know physically there anymore. But what I will do for you before um, anything else, before the end of the show here, is I'd like to gift you. I want you to close your eyes. And yeah. I'm going to do something that you're going to find to be very positive. So what we're going to do is have you close your eyes. I want you to yeah. take a deep breath in and exhale through your nose about three times. So you close your eyes, breathe in, release through your nose, breathe in, release through your nose, breathe in, release through your nostrils. And once you do that, clear your whole consciousness out completely. And what we will do now is we're going to send a Ashtar command ship over in England to where you are. Where are you? Uh, Nottingham. Nottingham. Okay, Nottingham. Nottingham. So Nottingham. Okay, so we're going to send a spaceship of the Astro Command over Nottingham, England, and yeah. uh, we're going to about mm, fifteen thousand feet cloaked above your location. And just to make yeah, I sure, feel, I can feel my crown in a minute now. You're going to see, you're going to feel something very strong happening here. For people that are, who've watched my show, you know what I, I do. I work very closely with our space family, our star family, and I'm going to do something for breakfast. So, uh, my name's we're Kieran. going to, my name's Kieran. Your name is what now? Kieran. Okay. I'm, Kieran. Maybe I'm not hearing. No. Kara? Kieran. Kieran. Taylor. Kieran. K Kieran. 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 Yeah, it's in English. Uh, Irish, Kieran. Man. Okay, I got you. Kieran. So we're gonna Kieran. do something for Kieran. I had to get the name. Kieran. Okay, Kieran. Uh, Kieran, we're gonna do something for you. We're going to send five space people from the ship into your location, meaning uh, into your home. In a second, I want you to keep your eyes closed. Yeah. And in a moment, I want you to just to let go of all your thoughts for a minute. I want you to just stay focused, let go of all your thoughts. Okay. And um, in a moment, there'll be a space woman. They don't usually tell me which one, but a space woman. The, uh, the five of them are about seven, seven and a half feet tall. That's their normal size. But what she's going to do is touch your forehead. I want you to just close your eyes. In a moment, she will touch your forehead. You're going to feel a, not a beam of energy. That's not the wrong, that's not the right term. You're going to feel a tingling sensation within your consciousness of your forehead. Uh, give it about a minute or so. Allow yourself to relax. And in a moment, you will feel a shift in energy within your own physical body. And when you do feel something, let me know. Yeah, I got a. Um, as soon as you said about the ship, I was I could feel my crown chakra open. Yes. Um, and I've had a lot of tingling all around my head. Yes. Yep. So what she did is she activated your consciousness to another level another high frequency the uh, space woman she just activated something within your physical uh, cellular structure so uh, yeah. as you go to, you're, you're waking up it's be morning for you now but in the coming days you're going to be activated with more information uh, and also you're going to be uh, protected in a bubble of light forever when That's i say real. a bubble of light forever i mean you're now activated into another frequency, a vibrational frequency. That's brilliant. Thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. That's my gift to you 
as we wind down tonight. I know uh, there are other people that we didn't get to interview tomorrow night at 11. If I didn't interview you tonight, I will bring you up tomorrow night. All the people that I might have missed here, uh, we'll bring you up to, I think, uh, Bad Chad. Uh, when you get up to 100 followers, Bad Chad, I know you have some stuff to talk about, too. We'll bring you up as well. So uh, definitely. Um, and I know you have a lot more stories uh, to uh, Kieran to talk about. Um, we'll, we'll bring yeah. you up again uh, earlier in the evening one night um, for sure. Well, um, just so I know the time difference, what time is it for you at the minute? Oh, it's uh, after two in the morning. Okay, so it's five hours. Okay, perfect. Yeah, That's yeah, nice. yeah. It's getting late here. Right. So it is late, but uh, I wanted oh, to make you. sure we got you on here too. I okay, thank you. Uh, any yeah, last, I really appreciate that. Any last stories you want to share before we uh, end the show for tonight? Uh, I've got there's so many to be honest. I know you have a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, but it's all it's all been positive for me since 2020 Good. everything um but yeah the one thing I'd, I'd the one thing i'd leave with everyone i think you hopefully you will agree people need to learn to trust their intuition more yeah because the amount of time a lot of people get frustrated that they don't see i i get told by a lot of people are oh, you so lucky so lucky oh, i'm like but i just listen i like a, a thing to say go outside and i won't question it i'll put my shoes on go outside and i look up and then I try and connect with that star. You think it's a star. Connect with one yeah. that you're drawn to and might speak and you'll be you'll be amazed at what happens. But yeah, brilliant. Thank you so yeah. much. I really appreciate hey. what you did. That's amazing. Karen, and I love the show. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Enjoy your day no, in, uh, over there in Nottingham for sure. Yeah, brilliant. Have a good night's sleep. All right, cheers. Bye bye. All right. Well folks. It's time for the commander to go to sleep. It's been a long show. It's been a good show. Uh, and again, we'll be on tomorrow night at 11. I want to thank all everybody all over my audience all over the world for watching another great show. Our audience makes it great. I want to thank you all for being here. Everybody have a good morning. This is Commander Alion, your host of Encounters. And remember, you're watching a show that's out of this world. Take care, everybody. Bye. Everybody take care.